Hello, my name is Azili. Thanks for watching. Today on our Cities for Beginners and Veterans Alike, we're going to be talking about zoning and district use for aesthetics. I know we're going out there. Let's dive in. The stuff I'm going to show you today is applicable to both console and PC. I am playing on PC. For disclosure purposes, I've adjusted the city so I don't really have to worry about power. I dropped down a big old nuclear power plant to not have to deal with it in the middle of today's tutorial. And to get ready for it, I produced a grid off camera and a bendy neighborhood, as well as their appropriate city services for water and power. This will take your game, if you haven't started to do this naturally, this will take your game a little further. However, if your goal is to cram a bunch of people in your city, then what I'm showing you, you could just skip over. If your goal is to make a beautiful looking city that's not just the same building repeatedly, this one is for you. We're going to start with our neighborhood. Nine times out of the ten, we're encouraged to do this because that's the first tool we encounter. And what it does is it fills in every little zone. And if we do that here, it fills in all of these tiles, right? So with this grid, for an example, if I click this, it fills in all of those tiles, which, you know, it's not that bad, but it's going to leave a lack of variety in our buildings because everything's going to be the same maximum space which is 4 by 4 when you zone I will argue we don't want this right there everything is going to be 4 by 4 if I zone this like that everything whoops everything is going to have a maximum size of 4 by 4 if, so if you've measured everything correctly and if, it, if this length and the width is divided by 4, it all adds up and it's broken down evenly into 4. Every building is going to be potentially the same size. And then you throw in wrenches like this in your grid, which we'll talk about that later. It's probably way too early in the city's history to do this. but we're going to do it anyway. So what I'm doing is I'm actually zoning. Now this is not being very creative, but we'll argue the creativity in a second. Not that we're really arguing. I think, I think that's plenty. Now I surrounded... I surrounded our uh, commercial with uh, that office as a buffer. I'm actually adding, whoops, high density. And I should have done this in the first place. But I want to show you how to use districts to create aesthetics or something thereabouts. I'm actually going to insert a road here because that's going to help us, especially when we get into districts. Districts themselves, they kind of like to draw themselves willy-nilly. And that can be a problem because you want you want some precision sometimes because this is a precise tool. 
Okay, so we have that. So now we're going to come over here. This is going to be dezoned. If you zone like this, and change it up every once in a while you're going to get much different buildings because they're only going to build they're only going to build what you've zoned which allows you to decorate or add trails or add further trees so on and so forth in your neighborhood. So what this does is this allows us to have different lot sizes, which is different home sizes. So now I shifted. They're too wide, but they're three deep. I'll leave that empty. And then... We'll get a four deep in there. So zoning like this is going to add variety to the game because the game will only spawn the homes. Here, we'll make this three by three that will fit. If I zone this, we're going to undoubtedly get a four by four zone, which we might get a massive house. But then if we do that enough and we have enough land value, we're going to get all of the same house because all of the houses at level five start to look the same or at level four or you know whatever 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 level this the the property ends up being when it's all said and done there's only so many zones Which means there's only so many houses that can be built. So doing this kind of forces some variety according to the game. Remember, the game has its own script. It wants to do its, its thing while we want to do some other things. So like this is a three by... Uh, two house. There. So we're zoned, right? I can, I can open it, let it, let it play. Although, <laughs> the other side's gonna also start to develop. So as we do this, we're basically telling the game, I want no more than this. Let's add to that. And then let's take this here and then put that there. I am going to let it let it play. So I placed in to help support our demand on the other side. I placed a university on the other side of the river to help get uh, the demand for those offices. This the city is going to have very little demand for anything at the moment besides residential. But once this residential starts to fill, whoo, <laughs> be ready. Cause I just zoned a lot. Okay. So as these start to build, some things that you can do when you unlock them, if you're playing with the locks is you could then Start to place trees. Uh, we'll do this. Go in the square. Thank you. Some park like elements in your neighborhood. Which 
will make it a more pleasant place to live. Now, I've probably placed some on some tiles that were zoned, which, I mean, it's okay. It's just that they'll probably disappear. For some variety, mix in some different trees. So now we have... That. And we'll let that develop. So this is starting to develop over here. But they don't want they don't have power at the moment. Shame on me. And they want to develop that spot first. That's silly. Oh, you just want to be troublesome there. So as this starts to develop, we're going to add some city services to make it more attractive. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Paradox Plaza. You get free by making an account. So Paradox Plaza... I'm going to throw down a park or two. This will all help. Because we want to get... We want to get the demand. Now, I didn't make very efficient exits. Which, you know... That, that would be a problem. I did it just for an example. So what I wanted to show you... Now we're starting to get some growth. What I wanted to show you was districts can be useful. I'm going to take this. I'm going to draw our box. Umber Hills. So what I drew our box around was some office and commercial. If I go back into our district and I click on policies, I can adjust things. Tax relief for high density commercial and tax relief for offices. I could do other things like parks and recreation. We can increase the land value. I could give it a, tell it to recycle. I could tell it that it needs to be conservative when it uses its power and water. And we could do all kinds of other things. Now, the only reason why I pointed those out and then recycle plastic, which I think is green cities, is these guys would help although if you're paying if you're playing with money this starts to cost a lot of money per building but as we go into something else big business benefactor heck yeah heck yeah we could boost connections but not right now not with the way we have it connected um that would be probably not cool so i've done that one so now as they're growing and building we're going to do another round we're gonna go We're going to go here. And as we draw this,
This is also office and some residential. So I'm going to tell this. Let's double check, make sure it's not all. Is it really all offices? No, it can't be. Yeah. As we go in to here, I want to lower our taxes for high density. But I want to ban high rises. Which what that should do is we should end up with pretty medium-ish density type buildings. I'm going to have to do this for the moment. You want to make this, make all of these guys build. Start building city services. So this inner ring should be when they when they level up completely which will let it will let it run and check back in but when they level up completely that should produce taller buildings in the center and still maintain some high density like this should be technically a medium density building if you will So it should produce some nice aesthetics where you have, instead of everything is so super tall at max level, these guys will grow to be filling up and then they'll be medium to kind of low height. And then you'll have your, and look, they're all on the park. You'll have your super taller buildings and the, the middle as sort of your downtown. Let's check in over here. Yeah. So we're slowly, we're slowly growing. Which is going to be for an example city. <laughs> We're in one of those lull moments where it's like, okay, well, you've done all that, but now we need more of this. We're in that lull demand that everybody is going to hit, especially in the history of our city. But zoning like this will help you have different house sizes and different house models. We have this model next to this model next to this model, next to this model. So it gives you some variety within your city, which is going to help break up the monotony that the game doesn't suffer from as much as it used to, but it does still kind of suffer from it. Like we've seen this house back there. We've seen this house back there. Uh, the biggest thing, yeah right across the street from each other. Although in real life you get that when a, when a developer has the same land. Like these are all the same. One, two, three. There's five. There's five buildings within like the same screenshot that are all the same model. Which, and then three there. And then two more. <laughs> So it, it does happen and you can only put in so many buildings to spawn before you start breaking computer systems and then making it very, very poorly optimized for console. 
But until next time, my name is Azili. Hopefully this was helpful. We didn't get to see the growth yet, but that'll be in an upcoming episode. Anyway, until next time, be good to each other. Have fun. Happy building. Thanks for watching. <laughs>